Hi, this is Natalie of the Vintage Cross Stitch Niche, bringing you another installment. As you can see, I'm wearing my scrubs today. I just got home from work, said hello to my husband, walked the dog, and then decided to make a video. And the reason I'm making a video is that I was listening to Saltbox Stitcher on the way home, and I had it in my head, some things I wanted to do and talk about today. And my husband's outside working, which is nice. He's working on his uh, new garage and he's converting our old garage to a man cave and it's giving me nice peace and quiet, so I'm happy. Just a real shout out for these scrubs. They're named Fix. So for those of you who wear scrubs to work, uh, these are the best I've ever found. They're not cheap, but with the coupons you can find online, they're not too bad. The fabric is soft, um, very happy doing that. So, as you can see, this is my, my business name, my stage name, it's Natalie Sohn, and I'm an OBGYN, that's what I do. I just started a new job, so I actually have more time now than I will in the future. Figure, use the opportunity to do fun stuff while I can. Anyway, a shout out and a, Thank you to the person who told me that this item was a fairy lamp. So you put a candle inside and it just glows beautifully. And originally I bought this to put scissors in top. Clearly that's not what I'm going to do. This is going to be on my counter. It has been all week with a little beautiful candle in it. So thank you to the person who told me what this was. I had no idea. And I thought I knew antiques and collectibles, and this was one that I did not know what it was. Did not know, so. Uh, fairy lamp. So what have I been working on all week? Well, let me show you the first thing. Oh, I gotta reach. Once again, just to reiterate, this is from My Dear Hearts by Blackbird. And I'm not working on the main the main sampler, I'm working on the pin cushion. And what is that called again? It's called it's the Sweetheart Pin Cushion. Here's the big picture. Originally done on weeks, uh, no, and picture this plus 36 count tango with sandcastle and fawn. I am doing it on my own linen, which is called the, this is the cherry wine linen, and on one of my videos you can see how I made the linen. And here is my progress. It is subtle. I think it's going to look real nice on the box. Here you go. Because this is the antique box. Remember I told you the difference between antique and not antique? Antique is over 100 years old and vintage is actually anywhere from 99 years to maybe not that long ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago. There's no exact science. It's when things became less modern and modern changes from year to year. So anyway, this is actually antique because it was made in 1909. Well, I'm not saying it was made then. It's a paper mache box and it's dated 1909. Somebody's name on the back. So that is the cherry wine linen and the, the threads I'm using are Weeks Dye Works Oak and Crescent Colors, which is now called something else, <laughs> not crescent colors. It's now called Classic Color Works. It's hazelnut. So I changed it because the white, the whitish colors didn't look good on that. So we'll see how this looks when it's finished. I was going to finish that myself and I'm not going to. I'm a little scared of the actual heart shape and cutting out the foam board and making it perfect. So I'm going to bring it to my needle workshop and have them finish it. The second thing I've been working on is, of course, the Louisa Snow Sampler by Little House Needleworks. 
And this is a uh, reproduction sampler. And I've been doing it on my own linen, which is Natalie striped linen. It's made with coffee and tea. And once again, you can watch a video to see. And here is what it looks like. There's a lot of brown. The whole top part is going to be brown. And of course, the bottom part is going to be a different color. But I did this because I thought this linen looks striped. <laughs> so I wanted to make it look close. Can't wait till I, I'm getting bored of starting of doing the top part. The top part is actually, uh, da, 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 what is this? I forget. I have it. I have it in the. Oh no, I have it right in front of me. Classic Color Works Caterpillar, and there's a lot of it. So I can't wait to do the flowers. All right. So that's what I actually been stitching this week. I don't stitch as much as others because I because of work, but I think I stitch a lot. And finally, um, I've been kitting this up. I have a bunch of charts I want to kit up. I like to kit up stuff so that, uh, number one, I don't sell the linen because sometimes I'll have extra linen and put it up for sale. And two, uh, I just want to grab it and have everything there if I want to start it. This is called Devil Runs by Primitive Hair. And I'm sure I've showed this to you before. This is my own beet dyed linen. As you can tell it's red. And these are not 100% the colors. The black and the gray will be. I think the gray. I might change that to different gray. And this is uh, DMC 321, which I don't like. I just ordered some, some variegated type colors from Weeks Dye Works and from, um, and from Gast. And we'll see. I, I, I got some suggestions about what to order. So we, I have the suggestions. And we'll see what happens. I ordered, a, I, I got a few of them, so I'll show you that next time. But anyway, I decided to do the Primitive Hair Devil Runs on the beet linen. This is red beet, only red beet dyed linen. And I think it's going to look really cool when it's done. I'm very particular when I hit up a design that it has to have the right, the right, linen and the right threads, which means often I will change the linen and threads to reflect my taste. There's nothing wrong with this. This is her own linen. All of her stuff is done on her own linen. It says 32 count aged, which tells me um, she might, this is an old chart. She might have done this before she was making all her primitive hair linen, which is gorgeous. There's old Massachusetts, there's old Salem, so I, I forget, I think the 32 count might be Salem, but, and it looks good, especially I sort of like the ragged edges. But right now, um, I really wanted to do this on the beet linen. I wanted to do something on the beet linen, and the beet linen's got that blood. It almost looks like I dyed it with blood. So I thought this would look great. So once I get the right color, I will revisit this and show you. I did get some new linen this week. So not much, but some. I'll often order something um, just to see what the color's like, because I don't have it, so. This is vintage bittersweet. I've had bittersweet, but not vintage. Lakeside Linens Vintage Bittersweet. I love it. It's sort of pink. When I say sort of, it's got a pink tinge to it. I hope you can see what it looks like. Real awesome. This is, I think, I don't remember if I showed this to you. This is Dames of the Needle called Limited Edition. <laughs> it's a limited edition Dames of the Needle. And it's awesome. I don't think I showed you this on the last one. I didn't get this this week. I got it two weeks ago, but pretty nice. This one's called Homespun by Lakeside Linens, and this is obviously very hard to get. I've never seen it before. Maybe I won't see it again. Can you see the color? It's creamy, a creamy color. 
It's not variegated very much, but of course lakeside linen is just lovely to work on. Okay. This is Vintage Maritime White by Lakeside Linens. I, it is not white. It is tan and very variegated because it's, I don't know, they call it maritime white, but it, if this is maritime white, which I would think is a white white, like a sail, this would be an old sail. <laughs> maritime white. r, &R Espresso. I have seen this before. This is just a 40 count and it's a big piece. Very neutral linen. This one is an extra design. It's called Snowdrop. You'll never see this again. She makes these limited edition and that's it. It's awesome. I love it. Love it. Love it. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but I, this one I absolutely will. This is an x design called Willow Green. And it's very subtle. This is a big piece. I hope you can see the color. A very subtle green, very variegated. It's beautiful. All of x designs are beautiful. This one is called Quicksilver by Lakeside. And to me, it's a mixture of silver and purple. <laughs> I hope you can see the purple in here and the silver. So it's silver and purple. Um, this is country linen called French Cafe Mocha by White Shelf. I got this this week. And it's very pretty. The country linen is really pretty. Pretty old fashioned, basic looking linen, but it has a nice feel to it. I like it. And finally, this is Medieval Gold, also made by x -Jude Design. It's got a lot of, it's got a lot of variegation. I hope you can see, not a lot, but some. Medieval Gold, just interesting linen. The only issue with this, it's 46 count. Am I ever going to do 46 count? I'm staring at this like, oh my God, I think I can do it. I'm not sure what I'm going to do on it. I'm going to save this because we'll see. That's it for linen to show you. Now for some interesting projects that I found. This is Cherry Hollow Farm Sampler by Stacy Nash. Pretty, huh? Came in this cute little kit with linen. What is the linen? I know it's R&R. &R. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let's see. This linen said, no, it says Weeks Dye Works Beige. Sorry. So it came with Weeks Dye Works Beige linen. It's not a linen I usually have on hand. Pretty nice. And it's very beige. Always have to make sure that I have enough light to show you the color. And it came with all of these threads. Check it out. That looks really good together. She's so talented. It even came with a needle. <laughs> this is a little kit. I don't know if I'm ever gonna do it. I think I will. What I like about it is it came in this nice little container which is, to me, awesome. It's got the clear pouch. I can see what's in here. It's got the photograph, but, and it's really pretty. Of course, the linen doesn't look anything like the picture. That drives me nuts, but the picture is much more antique-y. I would imagine you can dye this and then spray it with, the, with a tea spray, and it will look just like this. Okay. This is a vintage... Uh, needlework bag. Remember these? Maybe your mom had one. I found this at a thrift store years ago. 
It's big. It's got awesome fabric. I love it. <laughs> I needed to show that to you, but I wanted to show that to you because of what's inside. This I got from Hirschner's. These are pumpkin spice coasters with holders. And I got these last fall, and of course I haven't really finished them. I want you to see them. They're really nice. Um, they're worked on this stuff, which is like a plastic mesh with DMC. And it actually came with everything you need. It came with needles. It came with this big round metal thing. And of course, the uh, that's going to go on the bottom. This was a cool kit. I got it when they had it on sale. Oh, and look what it comes, it comes in a holder. So it also comes with this like really nice little holder. Um, the holder has a handle, I just didn't put it on here. Okay, so what have I done on this? Well, I did this. So I've almost completed one. This goes really quick and easy. This is great for an airplane. Um, it's because you don't need a hoop at all. This is, and it's so easy. And you do it, it's cross stitch. You do it with, with a thick piece of DMC. But these are gonna look awesome. I'm, I'm sure many of you have never seen this. Um, it even came with, this is like a really complete kit. It even came with this. Like it's a nice little organizer. So anyway, this is in a bag here. Th these are the, um, the pumpkin spice holders. They have these also in a Christmas design, but they're great. Um, I would try it, give it a shot. They're not expensive and you get a whole kit. I mean, this is a really a lot of stuff for the money. So, all right, let's show you what else we have in here. Ah, so I don't have to keep bending over. Let's show you the rest. Interesting. Look what I found in the bottom of my box, but a $10 euro. I don't know where that came from. We're going to Norway. That might come in here. Okay. So let me show you what I got here. This is an old Lucilla kit. Uh, Christmas, the season that warms the heart. It's obviously on, uh, it's got a lot, a lot of thread with it. It was 99 cents. That's why I bought it. Terrible, but I don't like, it comes with white Ada, which to me is boring, but I actually think that this design is really nice. Look at the Santa. Almost like a Russian Santa. I, I almost just like him. Teddy bear, very dated, but the Santa is amazing. Um, the Christmas tree is real pretty. So I actually bought it for the motifs. I even like the little window. I bought this for the motifs and it came with a lot of stuff and for 99 cents, how do you go wrong? You know? That's how I get myself in trouble. This is Dimensions Comfy Kitchen. This is actually a stamped cross stitch. You've probably never seen these guys. I'm sure most of you haven't. That's pretty nice. It's stamped. Um, it's just real pretty. I, I think this is gonna look nice. Once again, stamped cross stitch is very easy to do. And this is really pretty. This is a counted cross stitch oval hoop and display stand. Um, this is kind of cool. I saw this done on one of the, was it Stitch Mania? A, a moment about Stitch Mania. I quit the, the Facebook page called Stitch Mania because there was too much stuff on there that had nothing to do with cross stitch. And not, it was like, 
people would give their 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 medical problems, which I you know I'm a, very sympathetic to that. It's just cross stitch should be cross stitch, and medical problems should be a support group. So there were like extensive posts. Then somebody would post, um, you know, somebody posted a, a, it was a piece with a rebel flag and everybody put this person down. I felt really bad. And uh, there's more, it's just a lot of weird posts. And I quit it. It was too big, too. It was like clogging up my news feed. It was like thousands of people in there. Um, I emailed the administrator about something. She never had the courtesy to even email me back. I mean, I know she probably gets a lot of emails, but for God's sake, I mean, I, anyway. But I did see somebody on there, on the Stitch Mania one, um, do this, and it was really cute. This one is Days of Christmas, and look how cute. This is gonna be real easy. My only complaint about this is that I gotta paint these pieces. <laughs> Who knew? This, don't ask me why it's wrapped like this. I bought this on eBay. Somebody wrapped it pretty nice. Is decorative centerpiece. You, you can't believe what this looks like. Check this out. It's got all of these pieces. It's like a huge thing filled, and look what you get. It's, I mean, you, you do the little cross stitch pieces and <laughs> this is amazing. It's just amazing. I saw it and I, I loved it. The whole thing is made in the USA. Can you imagine this being made in the USA now? Never. It would be made in a factory somewhere. It's got the little tree. It's got the, the spinning wheel, the little, uh, the chair, the fireplace, the, um, this, the uh, sewing machine, and then you just cross stitch all this and put it together. This is not going to be a quick thing to make. I will absolutely make it. I love it. This is Chessie and Me, just a little itty bitty kit. It's called Blackbird House. I like that. And it's very small. And it came with everything, and this was a bargain. I found this on eBay, and I couldn't believe it. I got it for way less than even the price of these beautiful threads. I mean, when you look at the colors and you say, wow, that's just going to be real pretty, I, I just liked it. The greens and yellows and all that. And it comes with a piece of r, &R fabric. No, Northern Cross Linen. I, I thought it was r, &R but it's Northern Cross Linen. It looks like going on. Maybe it is. So sometimes you can find these little kits for a really good deal. Like people look at it and they'll say, eh, it's a little house. And then you realize it comes with all this floss. I mean, it's just beautiful. Rum raisin. These are maybe ones you've never seen before. Rum raisin. Khaki. I know you've probably seen that one. London fog. Love it. Lancaster Red, I'm just doing this in case you've never seen these. Lancaster Red reminds me of a barn. Um, moss. Cinnabar. Mascara, which is a black, nice black. And Honeysuckle. Whatever this light one is. Light khaki. Anyway. Had that. And finally, uh, anybody who knows me knows I'm a Dickens fan. I've said that over and over and over. I've made at least three Dickens pieces, mostly to do with A Christmas Carol, which is my absolute favorite story of all time. My daughter says I have the she wrote me in a letter and it said, Mom, uh, you do all this stuff. It was great. It was such a nice letter from my older daughter, Sarah. Hi, Sarah, if you're watching, because I heard she told me she thought my videos were cute. And so she told me that I am the only person that she ever known 
ever will know that has watched every episode, every version of A Christmas Carol ever done. So, anyway, this is an old one made by Needles and Hoops. Again, it's a it's a stamped cross stitch. I can show you the stamped cross stitch. It's not a pattern. It's nobody's copying this. And it is called Beaded Dickens Bell Pull. I'm gonna have to show you this in pieces. Let's see if I can, there we go. Look at the scenes. Pure Dickens. Came with all this nice thread and these beads. I don't know where the beads go, but it's going to be fabulous. I can't wait to do this. So much stuff to do, so little time. I'm really trying not to buy stuff because, although inevitably I do like everybody else, but in there there was these scissors. What are these scissors? Let's see. I always love showing you guys new scissors. This says Solingen, Germany. N-I-E-D. So who knows where I got these. Once again, Solingen scissors. I happen to be, love the stork ones, but anything that's the Solingen is going to be a good scissor, so just remember that. So again, we still have this to go through, just giving you a peek. I want you to see this. That's not all of them, but I collect, I've collected them over the years. I'm just going to show you some stuff that I'm sure that most of you have never seen. Okay, so this is an old DMC book. See, there's DMC. DMC put out these books. I do not think they make them anymore. This book is in French. And it, it doesn't have patterns, but it does. Because if you can look and see the way, let me just show you, it's done. It's cross stitch and it's a pattern. So look, you see the animals? You can see how that's done and copy it. It's as if you're having a pattern made of cross stitch. So I am showing you the pattern, but that's okay. Because it's a finish too. Let's go through this book. Unbelievable. I mean, this is your children's scene. A market scene with the flowers. I mean, those are beautiful flowers. Some gorgeous flower motifs. This is an old book. I don't know when it was written, but a bunch of, these are all circus animals. I'm showing you the ones I think are really cool. Cows, farm animals, clothes, hay, birds, all farm scenes. It's just chock full of stuff. And of course, I already showed you the penguin. Um, it's got somebody reading a book to children. People learning from the brain. Some old cars, a fountain. And I like, I think I, I like that the best. Look at the fox and the fish. Nice motifs. Um, actually, it's made in 1974, this book. Look at the peacock on the cover. So DMC made old books. Pretty cool, right? I highly doubt any of you have seen this. Maybe some have. This is a book called Praying Hands. And you can see it has it even has the price tag. I paid 88 cents for it. Um, it's from Leisure Arts, and it's got some lovely things in it. This is called Legend of a Dogwood Tree. At the time of the crucifixion, the dogwood tree stood, grew tall like other forest trees. Its wood was strong and firm. Well, anyway, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but the legend of the dogwood tree. 
Footprints in the Sand, a famous story. My precious child, I love you, would never leave you during your time of trials and suffering when you see only one set of footprints, that's when I carried you. Um, some grace. Just to go through this. I'm not going to have time to do them all. Um, behold a friend. God never loved me in such a way till he brought me to thee and said, Behold a friend. I think that is such a pretty sampler. The colors are lovely. So it has a whole bunch of bookmarks. I know people were doing bookmarks for a while. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way. How pretty. The trees. Some small ones. So anyway, you've probably never seen that, but that's really nice. Then I have a one called Little Inspirations. that are, some people make the world brighter by just being in it. The Lord is my shepherd. Um, bless this house, O Lord, we pray. Once upon a Christmas, this is a very interesting chart because it had this little this little stocking on it, which I think was pretty cool. And look at these itty bitty stockings. They're actually quite nice. You see the little motifs? Erica Michaels is still around. This is, um, if I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. It is a small a stocking with a little, I don't know what that is. For his own, let's see, is there anything I want to show you on this one? This is really old. Lord, thou hast searched me, and I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, with the bread. I actually like that one. That's pretty nice, and I like how it's round. I like the bread, our daily bread, the fish. There's something about that one I just like. Um, Revela that's Revelations, the bread of life, the light of the world. I gotta look, this one might look really good on my, um, my round piece that I showed you the other day. I put, I put it away. It was like a big round wooden thing. I'm gonna keep this one out. Hmm. Um, this one is called Heartstrings, an alphabet of memories. I hope you can see it because it's hard. It's an entire alphabet, all done in little hearts. Can you see it? Is it? You see? This is the elegant alphabet. And these are actually quite pretty. They've got a whole bunch of these monograms in here. Barnyard. There's nothing cool about this one, so I'm not going to show it to you. Ocean Gallery. This is actually very nice. Look at that design. That's really pretty. You see the bird? I like him a lot. It's a cool pelican. Um, this is, these are very, very, very pretty. And look at the shells. These are, these are actually very, very nice designs, and they are, they're not, these are not dated at all. Even though this, I'm gonna show you, this is my favorite one, the, the, the Pelican. Even though this book was, the book looks dated, but the actual designs are not. The book was made in 1987, um, and they're really lovely designs. I'm actually keep that one out. Like I said, I'm going to go through these. These are hush puppies. If anybody's into hush puppies, don't ask me why I have this, but I'm not going to show you. Well, why not? They're all hush puppy designs. Could you believe? 
Dachshund. If anybody wants this, has a Dachshund, and really wants this Dachshund chart, let me know and I will send this to you as soon as possible. Because I don't have a Dachshund, I have a poodle and a cat. But I'm very, very happy to send this to you if anybody has a Dachshund. Not a Dachshund, excuse me. A hush puppy, which is a... What the heck is a hush puppy? It's one of those uh, dogs with the long ears. Oh, I forget already. Tarleton Flats in the Old Red Barn. If you're into barns, this has some interesting barn, barn scenes. The only one that I think is really interesting, sort of, is the is some of these little, the red barn. And they had this little. Let's see, damask baskets. Very dated. <laughs> These are all. Aha, this one I did for my brother. I did this, uh, where's the one I did for my brother? This wedding memories. I actually made this for my brother and it came out really nice. This one right here. Leisure Art still sells this booklet. It's very, very pretty. Look at the, the wedding sampler up here. That is, at, that is really nice. There's nothing wrong with it. They also have this big wedding sampler that's quite nice. Um, this, excuse me, it's Stony Creek. They still sell this, but this has been around a long time. I made this for my brother like 10 years ago. And that one I thought you'd like. Want to see real dated? Ugly sweater. I should market this as ugly sweater book. <laughs> With a lot of, look at all kind of cute motifs. Look at the little Santa and the snowman. <laughs> TGIF, very dated designs. Once again, nothing I'm going to show you because there's nothing cool there. Ivy Wed, this is a very simple, some simple stuff, but I, I thought it was pretty. You could change this font. I mean, if you just made the outline and the flowers and you changed the font to like a more, much more, um, you know, a cross-stitch font, nicer letters, this would look very nice. Now we have some old books. This one is called Better Homes and Gardens, The Pleasures of Cross-Stitch. When was this book made? Who knows? Let's see, 1984. I'm going to go through this and show you ones that I think are actually quite nice. That is it. There is nothing wrong with that sampler. That is very pretty. It's not too elaborate. And on the right fabric would look unbelievably beautiful. And that one's called, it may not even have a name. I'm just going to show you what I think are the nicest thing in this book. That is, doesn't have a name. I'm sure it does somewhere, just I can't find it. And there's a lot of, a lot of <coughs> um, small, simple designs in here. This is a pretty nice wedding sampler. The colors are dated and muted. You want to make these different colors. If you're to change, imagine you change the fabric and change the colors, this would look really nice. So that's a wedding sampler. Well, they called it as a wedding sampler. But there's a lot of instruction on here. This was pretty nice, too. This was a floral done on paper. And the paper looks like it was dyed, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm just showing you the highlights of this book. There's something here on pansies, um, flowers. Once again, 1980s wear. Try it today, it'll be laughed at. Uh, and there are a whole bunch of stitches. They show you some stitches in this book. It's instructional. So these are old books, but they have some very, very nice motifs. Some of them are not, are very dated motifs, and some of them are actually quite beautiful motifs. Um, this, I thought, was very interesting. Now, you look at this, you're like, oh, but you see the border of the little houses? And the little, the little house in the middle, I thought it was quite nice. Just the border, I really liked. Yeah? Yes, one minute. 
And then this is a festive tablecloth. I, let me see if I can find the... As you can hear, that's my husband asking me to do some manual labor, I'm sure. Let's see. Um, I like this. Just the motif. I thought it was very pretty. I don't know if it shows up. Okay. So I'm going to have to uh, go help him, and then I will be, I will be back. I'm back. I had to help my husband put a cover on his boat, <laughs> so he needed me. So let's go on. Um, this one's called Quick and Easy Cross Stitch and Gifts. Made by Oxmoor House, The Joys of Cross Stitch. Apparently this was a series. I only have this one. It looks and smells new. Somebody bought this and never used it. So I'm just going to this has some really nice pictures. I'm just gonna go through and show you some of the more interesting ones that I think. Um, it has some of these interesting, these are season motifs. I thought they were sort of interesting. They called those gifts for the home. Um, these are very pretty. I, I spoke to you about how nice towels are. Oop. See if I can show you the towels. Here we go. There we go. These are especially nice motifs for towels. So towels are a quick gift and they're really, really nice. I actually, I like those very, very much. Um, a very small but simple design. Welcome to our home. This would be a lovely gift. I mean, sometimes you want to give a gift to a new neighbor and you don't want to spend like gazillion hours making it. This would be very sweet to give to them. If you framed it real nice, they'd love it. But I, I thought that was very pretty. This is adorable. This is a welcome, look at the, look at the squirrels. They're awfully cute. Um, this is an old book, but that is a contemporary design. Give thanks to the Lord for his good. This is a very simple design, but actually it, it's very pretty. It's got very pretty motifs. It would make a really lovely gift as well. Um, like I said, I'm going to go through this and show you ones that I think are really nice. This was pretty. It showed you it was some sort of pincushion motif. But the border's pretty. It's, uh, that would have looked very nice on my um, on my box. I wish I saw that before. That's very pretty. Um, this is cute. Uh, I like that a lot. I thought that was really pretty. Uh, let's see. Of course, they have the cutesy stuff in here. <laughs> I just have to show you this. Is that '80s or what? <laughs> I, I love it. But I am showing you the more contemporary ones, the ones I think are just darling and are actually very, uh, really not old in style. Let's go through this. But this is kind of a cool book. My dog is just going to bark and bark and drive me crazy. Um, let's go on. These are very cute holiday motifs simple. But that is awfully cute. It's not too hard. And what a great thing. These are really pretty. These are little uh, motifs made to put on boxes. Once again, heart shaped. That one's very pretty. I'm just going through this. I thought this was pretty too. It's a lily of the valley flower. I'm not showing you anything with ducks on it because I think that's definitely 80s, although I have, I do like us. Gifts for Christmas. Let's see what we got. Um, this, these are really not, these are very contemporary. Look how pretty that is. Once again, it's got deer and it's got squirrels. On the right fabric, that would look awesome. 
And here's that same motif done a little bit differently. Peace on Earth. That's very pretty. There's nothing wrong with that. It's called the Peace on Earth Sampler. Merry Christmas with the Palmers. This is very pretty. I'm sure you've never, I've never seen any of these done. Um, this is a nice little border with holiday lights. Look how simple that is. With some vintage fabric and some vintage, um, just the little lights. Vintage lace or tatted lace. That's really nice. I knew I bought this book for a reason. Um, who knows where I got this book? But there's a lot of cool stuff in here. There's some dated stuff, but there's some very cool stuff. Um, basic Noel sampler. Simple, but again, these small ones you can do as a, get, a very quick and easy gift. Um, I think, look how much you get in here. Crazy. Joy Noel, and this is a cute Santa. I like the nose on him, but it's very cute. But anyway, this book is by Oxmore House. It's called Quick and Easy Cross Stitch Gifts. Uh, the date on it is 1991. At least it's in the 90s, but pretty nice. This one's Better Homes and Gardens Christmas from the Heart. These books have beautiful graphics. You can find them for next to nothing nowadays. This is volume 15. There's a lot more than cross stitch in here. There's all kinds of Christmas uh, projects and recipes and everything. So just to show you, they have some, I'm just gonna go through here and again, we're gonna show you some of the more interesting projects that they have. I thought this was really pretty. Um, looks like that's made with paper. I thought this is real pretty. That tree. Made with paper and all the patterns are in here. So they have a lot of paper stuff in here. Um, let's just go through it. And every pattern to make these is in here. There's recipes. I'm certainly not gonna go through recipes. These are candy topiary trees. Very contemporary. Um, these are, look at these, these are made with melted candies and cookie cutters. And you put them in the light and they're shiny. They're so pretty. Some simple stitched items. Those are more like for kids or something. And there is some, some cross stitch in here. They're very small ornaments. These are basic, pretty ornaments. But quick stitches, not bad. Oh my goodness. Let's just go through this and see if there's anything else more interesting I wanna show you. This is up my, right up my alley. They took a box and painted it and mounted something and made it into a Christmas card box. But I love that idea. They painted it. So that's Kelly, my husband, who's... <laughs> it's all being, it's all being, uh, all... <laughs> this could be live, folks, but anyway, this is an awfully pretty book. And they've got a, a lot of really nice stuff in here. So these are the Better Homes and Gardens Christmas from the Heart series. Very pretty. These are uh, these books. There was a whole bunch of them made by Leisure Arts, and they all sort of had the same font. This one's called Tokens of in fact, Tokens of Affection. This is the Christmas Remembered series, book number nineteen. I think I only have two of these. I have two of these. Um, but they're really pretty. So wait till I show you. Um, just to show you, they have some birthday, pretty nice birthday um, flower motif bookmarks. I don't know why it says Christmas, because it has nothing to do with Christmas. They also have a baby one in here. 
Um, hmm. I guess this has more than Christmas. This has other holidays in it. So let me go through you and just go through and just show you some interesting ones. I thought this was pretty interesting. The witch. This is a Thanksgiving one. Not kind of hard to find Thanksgiving. That's kind of nice. Uh, this is called Christmas Offerings. That is awfully pretty. Really pretty. And this one is also pretty. It's actually lovely. Okay. These little books are awesome. I really thought they did a beautiful job with these little books. Can you see that with reflection? Oh, it's so hard to do this here. So, what was this book made? Let's just look. This book was made in, there's no, there's no date, but I think it's 1990 sometime. Nope, 2000. Oh, 2000. And they've got some really nice stuff in here. Some dated and some awesome. That's why I'm going through this. This is called Special People. This is a lovely sort of sampler kind of thing. But look at how pretty the border is with all the flowers in that border. Uh, let's see. Just going through this just to show you some of the more. I think the rest of these are charts. But anyway, that's a pretty book. Tokens of Affection. It's in the Christmas series, but it's not. Here's an oldie but a goodie called America's Best Cross Stitch by Better Homes and Gardens, another one. And they, they had tons of these books back then. Just to show you, that's a very pretty sampler in front. I love the sunflowers, and it's just very pretty. And like I said, this one was made in what year? Hmm. 1988. I'm not going to go through and show you the dated stuff, but I will show you some of the really nice stuff. Look at this sampler. Can you see that? It's very pretty. It's a, sort of a long sampler with flowers. Um, the, the frame doesn't do it justice, but it is very pretty. Uh, let's see, they have some bedding kind of stuff here. Um, another sunflower, if you're into sunflowers. That's a really pretty sunflower. A tea cozy. I don't know if people really use those very often. Hmm. Let's go through this. We have to... You have to go through this and get the nice ones to show you. This is a lovely, lovely um, little tiny round sampler. Very cute. It's not tiny, actually. It's just a round sampler. And this is another sampler. There, nothing wrong with these samplers. They're really cute. Some of them are quite more than cute. They're great. That's why I'm going through the whole book. I'm going to show you the highlights of the book, things I think are just really, really nice. And then you can find these books for next to nothing. I mean, and they're very nicely made. There's some children's stuff in here. I don't have to go through this. This says a treasury of antique samplers. Unfortunately, they don't give you, they don't tell you who these people are, but these are really nice samplers. And there's all the charts in here. This is very pretty. Um, here's one of the motifs they just showed you, just to show you. I'll show you some more. We've got, oh my gosh, look at this one. That's a very pretty antique sampler. And this one. That's really nice. It's a nice little house. Here's more. These really nice samplers are in this book. 
That's one more. Let's just show you. So these samplers are in this book, America's Best Cross Stitch. Um, I've got the full charts in here. So it's really, you know, there's nothing, that's why I'm always telling people, there's nothing wrong with looking through these old books. This is sort of a woodland sampler. I thought it was darling. Um, sampler with deer. That's what they called it. Woodland blossoms. Again, I'm showing you the stuff that I think is especially nice. Because um, there is some stuff in here that I don't know, but there is some great stuff in here. Um, that is a very pretty ornament chart. Noel with a pine cone. That's, a, that's quite timeless and it's beautiful. You've got a partridge in a pear tree. You can just take one of these guys and make an ornament, but I sort of like them. Or partridge in pears. Um, here's a Christmas greetings. This one looks really, um, really vintagey, uh, antique looking. I like this one actually. See that one? I love the these candles. That's a nice little sampler, and it's not too hard. None of these are. Some of these motifs actually have a lot of colors, and some are fairly basic. Look, look what they've got for in here. Check this out. In this book. Directions and charts to do this entire gingerbread house. I would love to see somebody do this house. Look how cool that is. And then of course they've got just a gingerbread sampler. That's pretty nice, huh? It's very nice. And they've got full charts and instructions and everything. I think that's about it. Then they have, of course, a little whole thing on finishing and all that. But anyway, the name of this book is America's Best Cross Stitch. Uh, two, what year did I say it was? 1990-something. <laughs> Oh, that's my cat. Uh, 1988, and it's got antique sampler designs in it. It's got great Christmas stuff. You could probably pick this book up for nothing right next to it. All right, so that is... Now we, now we go to another Better Homes and Gardens book called Cross Stitch Samplers. Uh, the sampler on the front. Pretty thin book, but there's some very cute samplers in here just to show you. There's Be Ever So Humble, There's No Place Like Home. I like this. The little, looks like Russian people. Bless Our Farm. Celebrations of Home. Samplers. This is sort of a blue. <coughs> so there's some really nice samplers in here. And there's tons of them. This one's kind of cute. I mean, the, the fabric is dated, but the actual sampler is really pretty. Look at all the flowers. It's numbers and flowers. Got some wedding ones in here. Okay, they've got some children's samplers, sort of dated, but not bad. A lot of bears. <laughs> and let's see. I think that's it, right? I showed you most of them. So this one's called Cross Stitch Samplers, Better Homes and Gardens. Very nice book with some really cute stuff. Here is another one called Better Homes and Gardens Christmas from the Heart, another one of their series. 
this one, this looks like it's not that old. Let's see. Again, uh, volume 12. Doesn't say what year it is. Why does it not say what year it is? But it doesn't, who knows? I, I think this is probably 2000s. And there's quite a bit of stuff in here. Um, beautiful ideas. Let's just go through this so I can show you some of the better ideas, I think. And there's a lot of different projects, including cross stitch, of course, just like the other one. Um, look at these cute ornaments. Mamagi or the Magi. And those are made of beads or beaded. Some weird, how do they make those? Beaded clay. So they're made of clay with beads. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, let's go through this. I'm just looking for the cute ones. They've got directions how to make this. You see him? It's hard to see. But it's a reindeer out of like sport what out of buttons. Uh, this one's a little dated. Dated. I'm just going through this one. Obviously, this one has got interesting pictures, but I don't see anything that I'd want to do in here. That's why I'm going through it real quick. And the cross stitch in here is very pretty simple. And here we are, recipes. But anyway, this one's Christmas from the heart. It's a pretty cover, but I think the older, better homes and gardens are nicer. This one's called Timeless Ornaments. I really like this one. I've looked through this one numerous times. The year is 1995. Hard to believe how long ago that was. These are called Heartfelt Messages. They're really nice little ornaments. They're very pretty. Let's see. These are awfully cute. Look at the little stockings. The little stockings. The girl sleeping. Look how cute this is. That's very nice. These are all very nice. I'm just going to show you. Down the chimney, St. Nicholas. Look at these. They're really nice ornaments in this book. I've looked through this one many times. I like this little round motif right there. The poinsettia. I like that it's round. Let's see. Oh, we've got a bunch of elves and woodland Santas, just to show you. And I love the little um, mushrooms. And the mushrooms are bomb. Oh, here's a better picture. <laughs> I obviously had a marker in here. The little mushrooms. And the woodland Santa. And actually, I thought this was really cute. Look, it's got little... Oh, can you see it? No, you can't. Here you go. Oh, it's whatever. There you go. See, it's got the sticks. It's supposed to be little logs. Very, very cute. Here's some, they call these schoolgirl embroideries, but these are fairly simple. With buttons. Hold on, I gotta plug in my. Oh no. This video is so long that we're losing power. I may have to finish it in a little bit. Let me see if I can plug it in. Well, I'm back after that fiasco. <laughs> my camera shut off. So let's go on. Okay, so now just to reiterate, we're in timeless ornaments by Leisure Arts. There are so many beautiful, beautiful little, look how cute these are. Little ornaments in this. 
I mean, that's just pretty. So is this Santa? I don't have to skip over a lot in this book because it's really just beautiful. Look how cute he is. These are very well done and timeless. They do have a nativity that you could do. One of those stand-up nativities. And I'm just going through this. Getting some of my favorites. And I think we just went through this book. So as you can see, they're just really pretty. So timeless ornaments by Leisure Arts. Before I forget, just to, uh, I have a, an aside, I'm gonna call this Christmas linen because it smells like mulled wine. Now, why does it smell like mulled wine? Because I cook this in some wine and cloves, ground cloves, and made this linen called mulled wine linen, or Christmas linen. Now, I did rinse it pretty well, still has the faint smell of cloves and wine, so mm, I can just love this. I hope you can see how pretty the color is and how subtle. It's a tan, this started out as cream. It's like a tan color with a little bit of red in it. It's called mulled wine. Let's get back to what we were doing. Here's a different one. This one's called Vanessa Ann Holidays in Cross Stitch. And this was obviously made in 1994, released. And this is an interesting book because it has the whole year's worth of holidays. And these are holidays that you've never heard of, some of them. National Soup Month in January. So you've got three bears in soup. Just to go on, that's a little dated, but it's okay. Quilters escape, something to do with a quilter's holiday. So they've got this cross stitch, quilting pattern. It's kind of neat. Like I said, the Carrot Festival. never heard of these. Then it's got the Winter Olympics, of course. <laughs> so it's got a thing for your skiers. World Marriage Day. None of these look like ones I'll do. Let's see, we've got Valentine's Day, of course, and then it goes to St. Patrick's Day, then it goes to first day of spring. I'm looking for the better ones. Then Easter, and this bunny is actually really cool. It's all cross-stitch pieces that are sewn together. That's hard. But that is a very nice pattern. Full instructions and everything, pattern. Then you got St. George's Day in April 23rd, and you can see there's somebody slaying a dragon. Um, and then you've got Better Sleep Month in May, I kid you not. Just going through these. Mother Goose Day, and of course Mother's Day. The Mother's Day ones are very pretty. Here. They're very, that's a very pretty motif, especially this, whatever that is. That's pretty too. I don't know what those are actually. They're sort of like little wrappers. And uh, National Rose Month, these are beautiful. Look at that. Bet you've never seen that. And there's a second one here. These are very pretty and they're timeless. National Rose Month. And then you've got Children's Day, Father's Day. 
keep going on and on. First day of summer, Spirit of America Day, and of course, Independence Day. I really like this, let me show you. That's nice. I almost did this. Now, the thing is you need, it says cross stitch on amber linen, unstitched amber linen, and country blue plaid, plaid fabric. So you've got these strips of linen, and then you've got fabric in between, and of course this piece. This whole thing is pieced together. It's nice. Um, it says here, how do you make those little strips? It says, from unstitched linen cut two six by 20 strips and three six by 26. Uh, it just says to cut them. So, I don't understand how there's no, like, no, nothing unraveling. Um, I guess they, they, maybe they did unravel a little bit, but they're sewn together so well that you don't see it. It's sort of on the other side. But I like that, that Independence Day. Watermelon Day, August 20th. Who knew? I had to show you that. Harvest Moon, September 19th. First day of autumn, September 21st. A stitch, uh, National Clock Month, October. Halloween trick or treat. This is kind of cute. As we go on, the first Thanksgiving, November, it's sort of an Indian motif. Or Native American, I should say. Don't worry, we're getting through the year. And then, of course, Thanksgiving. And I thought this was very pretty. Um, it's some sort of like mat they made. But it's very pretty. I don't know if you can see the colors, but it's, it's, it's not bad. It's nice. And then we've got first day of winter. It almost looks like a Mary Inglebright. Remember her? I, don't, I know it looks crooked. That's because it's crooked on the, on the page. And then, of course, Christmas Eve. And they've got a pretty nice stocking. And what's, what's for Christmas Day? I haven't been through this book in a while, so let's see. Scandinavian tree skirt. It's actually really pretty. If you can see this, it's square tree skirt. It's more of a tree mat. It's, it's quite nice. What is it made on? Cluster, which is seven counts. So it's made with a real thick, heavy material. It's pretty. Then Scandinavian stocking. Let's see what else we have. And then, of course, Christmas Day, they've got a Santa. These are all very leisure arts looking with a lot of... I prefer more prim stuff, but there's, and samplers, I love samplers. And of course, general instructions they have. But. So that's holidays and cross stitch, an entire year, most holidays you've never heard of. <laughs> then we've got this book called Cross Stitch Plus. It's sort of an instructional book that gives you all kinds of different techniques. And there's some very pretty things in here. Um, and it, it's at, very instructional. It goes over how to do beadwork, how to do cross stitch, how to do hard anger. I'm just looking for some of the nicer motifs. Some of them are quite dated. I think this book is from the 90s. I'm not sure. Um, is there anything I like? Yeah, I thought there was. So hold on one second. This is it. This is a very pretty fairy. I love the border. It's pretty nice. And they're saying that's under black work. So I don't know why they consider that black work other than it's on dark paper. That's black work. And this thing is, did they say who made this? 
No, they did not say, but it is really, there's another picture on another page. It's very pretty. And yeah, because the work is on the sides. And then just go. Is there anything else? I think that was what I really liked was that piece right there. I thought it was pretty. They have some cold work, some hard anger. Not much else. I thought this was kind of interesting. They put like these postage stamps there. I thought it was interesting anyway. So this is a book. It's more instructional than anything. It has one nice pattern. Uh, on to the final. Uh, so that's the old, and this is the new. This is Prim uh, P Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher Magazine. I do have a subscription to this. I like, they have an online subscription and they also have the uh, Glossy Magazine. I like to hold a pattern in my hand, so I have the Glossy Magazine. And I'll go through this one magazine so you can see it. Uh, it's Nice. There's some half cross stitch and half uh, punch needle. So this is their, of course, spring issue. I don't have their summer issue yet. Uh, B is for Bunny, and that's punch needle, and that is by Two Old Crows. And then this is by Lindy Stitches called Three Snows. Faded Flowers by Old Tattered Flag. Punch needle. And then this one is The Hair Sampler by Teresa's Primitive Treasures. Very cute. Springtime Rose by Rustic. Country needle crafts. It alternates between between punch punch needle, which I've never done. I do have one one thing kitted up for that. And uh, cross stitch. This one's by Primitive Hair. Now why don't isn't the name here? Uh, I don't have the name, but this is by Primitive Hair. Oh, I'm sorry, Bridget Bridget Swan. I love the way they, they did the feathers. That's pretty cool. Our primitive hair. It's right on the top there. Rabbits. There seems to be a lot of rabbits in this one. <laughs> rabbits Tulip Delivery. Punch you. And that's by Painting with Threads. And this one looks like Barbara Anna, yeah. And this is called Spring Basket. Then they've got stuff like this is a store called Keepstakes. They show you the picture of the store. There's a, that girl Stephanie, she has a uh, she has a YouTube channel that's very popular with her mom and apparently her store is featured. Then they have one, a skunk, Philomena Skunk by Not Forgotten Farm, and that's another punch needle. It's a skunk. I mean, look at all the stuff you get. And this one's Quaker pin, uh, pin Cushion by Lucy Bean. This goes on and on, right? And then we have Carrot Row by Teresa Cobit. Then we have Welcome Spring by Open Road Adobe Needlework. I've never heard of them. Interesting pattern. Uh, then there's a whole thing by uh, The Creative Twist by uh, Vonify for the Twisted Stitcher, but he knows who she is. And 
she did this finish and she gives you a complete, I'm not gonna show this because you have to buy the magazine to see it, but she gives you a complete instructional uh, tutorial on how to make this. And this is by La Di Da. It's just a piece of the pattern. But as you can see, it sits up. It's a very nice pattern. Entire tutorial. She's in here every month giving all kinds of tut interesting things, tutorials. This is the Teacher's Pet Basket and Bloom. Punchino. Uh, this is Doves for, Spring, uh, Doves for Spring by Rivera's. called the Strawberry Mold by Village Folk Art. I don't know most of these designers. Those look like fried eggs to me. <laughs> They're beautiful flowers. Birds of Spring by Dames of the Neal, one of my favorite designers. And Toledo. I love her finishes too. And the way she put photographs with it's very pretty. And I think that's it. No, there's two more. This is Close Encounter by Roberta Jackson of Dogwood Trail Arts. So I don't know these designers that do the punch needle. But I figured I'd show you that because I'm going through the whole thing. Maybe I'll get into punch needle. Welcome Spring by Sub Rosa Design. I love the cat. Look at his face. Okay. Is there any more? Yes, there's Poppy by the Cooperage. Once again, somebody I don't know, but Punch Needle. Looks like more fall. And are we getting to the end? Is there any more? No, there isn't. So you've now seen the old and the new. And some of these old designs would look new, done in a more variegated or dyed type of fabric done with maybe brighter colors. Brighter colors in a more interesting type fabric and also photography with other things in the photography like scissors and fairy lights, right? So you, there's so many patterns in here which easily could have been featured in here. This is the new, that's the old. And, you know, times have changed, cross stitch has evolved. So keep an open mind when it comes to older patterns. Like I said, I, I sort of flipped through the books and showed you what I thought were the best patterns, many of which are really nice. And if you, if you change the colors and change the fabric would be the hottest thing that everybody saw. Oh my God, did you see that? Especially, you know, you saw the one, there was one in there with um, some really cute little squirrels. Squirrels are gonna be in. I've already seen some squirrels last year at uh, Nashville and the Nashville show patterns that came out. There's some squirrels. So I think squirrels are in. And I saw these patterns with squirrels that look like they could have been made this right just now. They, some designer. And you know, it is business. People do want to create things that look new and improved and so forth. But don't discount older books because you think they're all just, you know, um, dated items. And there are a lot of dated items in there, but there are a lot of really nice patterns that you could make that will wow everybody. When I mean wow, they'll be like, where did you get that? Oh, it's out of print. Oh, you know, and everybody will be looking for it on, on, on online. So there's nothing in here that I think I'm going to stitch in this particular one. I think in another video, I'll go through a Christmas one. There's a lot of nice stuff in there. I, I like some of the patterns better than the others in this magazine, like everything else. And I already have a lot of stuff to stitch. And actually, out of everything we went through today, what did I want to stitch? I want to stitch some of these. I want to stitch this guy, just to show you. Am I going to stitch him on this this kind of, uh, on, uh, what do you call it, blue fabric, 
with a with a big uh, oval oval uh, what would you call that mats and all that no we're gonna stitch him on interesting fabric with bright colors and put a really neat uh, maybe an antique frame on him and we're gonna make him look awesome I'm looking at the pattern there's no back stitching the whole thing is is it says DMC and Bates. What the heck is Bates? Bates must have been a floss that isn't made anymore. If anybody could tell me what Bates is, please uh, let me know below because that's how I learn. I've never heard of Bates. But um, there's a whole bunch of colors. I probably, would I keep these colors? Maybe. I would pull them all out and look at them. Put this on an interesting piece of fabric, and before you know it, I'm gonna have a brown pelican, and everybody's gonna be like, where did you get that? It's gonna look really cool. Uh, so what did we do tonight? I showed you some interesting linen. I showed you another piece of, hmm, I just wanna smell this all night. Christmas linen, mulled wine linen. Um, I showed you the projects that I'm working on. I showed you a lot of old stuff that you've never seen, I'm sure, and some new stuff, new magazines. And um, please let me know that you're enjoying these videos. I'll do more if people enjoy them. I am going to take a break from videos because I'm going away on a trip for two weeks. So no, well, there may be videos out of that trip. I'm going to Norway and I'm going to bring my camera and video needlework, if I can find it, Needle, uh, video antiques that I think would be great for repurposing. I'm going to find, we're going to make an interesting video, at least if I can't video it, I, well, why can't I video it? I'm, I'm going to try to do that or take stills. I'll report back from Norway to see what the Norwegians are doing over there. Um, there is... Uh, the Scandinavian needlework is beautiful. I was in Copenhagen last year, and I was sorry I didn't uh, wasn't doing floss tube then because I saw a whole lot of cool stuff, and it was it was great. So, from my house to yours, that's my new saying at the end. From my house to yours, have a great evening and keep stitching. <laughs>